nice, beautiful man who eats chocolate from their from their loved ones. And professor loves you, so you will get chocolate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, once again, to recap, you can you can think in terms of three historical models. Okay. Model one is small government where government doesn't really do anything. Okay. But then. In the 19th century, people wanted, you know, more services from government. Okay, so they became big. Also, lots of rules and regulations to make sure there's no corruption. But then, in the later 20th century, people wanted, you know, they're not satisfied with big government anymore. They wanted more flexible, entrepreneurial government. So that's why we have our three models of government. Okay, one, two, and three: small government, big government, more entrepreneurial governance. Okay. Now, moving on, and then in the introduction chapter, they talked about, they gave you different examples, right? Remember what happened at East Harlem? What was the example at East Harlem about? Come on, you read it. East Harlem is rich or poor? Poor. It's a poor neighborhood in New York City. So it's poor or black. Schools suck. Okay? And so they wanted to make things better. So they decided to move from Monopoly to choice. Because uh, again, entrepreneurial government is all about moving resources from less productive to more productive. Okay? So we're spending all this money for education. How can we make it more productive? And one way is to increase choice. So in the old days, you know when you went to school, your school building? It had how many schools? Usually one school. Right, one school, right? But in Harlem, you have, you know, one big building. Like, how many floors is this building? This building has about what? Well, seven floors, right? In the old days, you have one school, but imagine three schools or four schools in the same building. Okay? Yeah, and people can choose which floor, which building, I mean, which school. Okay? And by having at least schools you have competition you see what you know which you know which system is better okay so some schools have 50 students some schools maximum with 300 if you get more than 300 the the you know the school board asks you to split up the school so you'd be like McDonald's so you can yeah, you can replicate you think? and so people never thought about that in East Harlem and I, don't, and I don't think people thought about that in Korea. Have you ever imagined that in Japan or Korea, that the same building can have more than two or three schools? You never, yeah, you never imagined that, right? You thought that the only way to have school choice to get more schools is to create another building. Oh, that's too much money. We cannot do it. But people use their imagination and they say, why one school? You can have two or three schools, and then people can choose. And the schools that are popular will grow, the schools that are not popular will die out. Okay? So that's the example from East Harlem. The, the other example from introduction was you know, from Vesalia and the Department of Defense, and they talked about line item budget to you know, unified budget. What does a line item budget mean? That means every budget you have to specify in advance. Okay? Why? Well, an example might be, do any of you guys do body? Like a student associ student association? In high school? Yeah, high school or college. Okay. And so when you do body in high school, you know, sometimes you get money from the school, right? To, to do activities. Can you use that money for whatever you want? No, only for my... Yeah, only for specific activities, right? You cannot go out and just watch Snow right? <laughs> okay. You have to, and you have to, so it, they have very, very specific roles that, you know, they budgeted maybe like, like Ishimano for this, Tenshimano for that, and you cannot shift funds from one category to another category, okay? Because they don't want students to use that money for bad things. So that, so if you have very strict rules, and there is very specific line item where you have to spend money that reduces corruption, but it also undermines what? 
it also undermines your capacity to what to be you know to be flexible right because imagine that you have imagine that you got like you know Ishimana to buy you know desktop computers okay and maybe like in the old days desktop computers are good but today instead of using Ishimana for desktop computers you might want to use that money for what what yeah, smartphones or laptops or even or tablets, right? And so tablets might actually be more efficient, make you more productive than a desktop. But because the budget was made like two or three years before, it doesn't, it cannot adapt to to rapid changes in technology. Do you see? And so entrepreneurial government tries to shift from line item to more unified budget. So you have more flexibility where to spend money. And the example from the book was when this guy wanted to buy an Olympic swimming pool. Okay? And the, and so he had to buy it fast. He had to pay a deposit. But because this was a unified budget, you can shift funds from one category to another, run out and buy the swimming pool. Because he had good communication with the city council. He knew that they wanted a swimming pool. And if there was a good opportunity to do it, then you should run out and buy one. Okay? <coughs> so yes, that, that means you're more entrepreneurial. At the same time, that means that you, know, you only want to give unified budget to people that you can what? People who's going to use that money for SOMAC? No, people you can trust to do what is right. Do you know what SOMAC is? Right. Oh, okay. Foreigners, you have to tell me so you can learn Korean. <coughs> Foreigners, okay? What SOMAC is so Soju Mekju. Uh, I'll call it. Right, right, Soju Mekju. So they call it SOMAC. Mekju means beer. Right, right, is beer, Soju is that. No. It's a green bottle. Right, right, green bottle. <laughs> you learn. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Korea. <laughs> yes. So, you know, it's my first time learning too. Did you hear about SOMAC? Did you know that in China? Or only when you come to Korea? Oh, so famous. <laughs> okay. All right. That was introduction. Okay. Now, chapter one is catalytic government, right? What does catalytic mean? Come on, you're learning English, right? Yeah, it starts as. Yeah, it starts a chemical reaction. Okay? So the point is that government doesn't have to do everything, but a government can be the spurt, the start, okay? To make big change in society. So it's catalytic government. Okay? And the key concept here is uh, well one is governance. That government doesn't have to be monopoly, you can have other actors do things. And the other key concept is steering versus rowing. Okay? Now you know what rowing means, right? Yeah. Okay. I used to teach English to have you out. Row, row, row your boat. Gently by the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. Alright. So rowing is you work, you, know, you push the boat, right? What does it mean to steer? Right, you're leading the boat to the final destination. Okay? And, and the authors say, you can actually split the steering and the rowing. Because imagine you're steering. And what's your name? Mr. Yoon mm -hmm. is ro rowing, right? And then you want to go there, but he keeps push pushing there. So what can you do? Yes, you can tell him, yeah, yeah switch. And if it doesn't switch, you can what? No, you kick him out of the bow. You get a new rower. Do you understand? Right. But you cannot do that if he's your brother or your you know, younger or something. Okay, you're too connected because you know you have to guarantee him a job. But if you're separated enough, you can measure him just based on his performance. If he doesn't roll fast enough, or if he's rolling the wrong way, yeah, you just say, like, get another job. Get a different job. Right, and 
eventually you can get a different person. So you can switch lower. You have more flexibility. So you, you can you can separate the steering and rowing. Okay? And again, you can think of examples. Uh, again, like, uh, well, in terms of like my model, small government, let's take public housing. Let's say you want to build housing for poor people. Small government doesn't build any housing. Big government builds, you know, model two, big government, they build housing. But because it's only for poor people, it's not good quality. And then maybe model three is, instead of building the public, public housing by yourself, you get somebody else to build it, like a private de developer. So it can be mixed. Rich people and poor people live in the same building. Okay? That's one example, which is very popular in you know, American cities like San Francisco, Boston. Another example is we talked about schools a lot, right? That again, instead of the school board running the schools, the school board lets other actors run the schools. Okay? And Osborne and Gabler talked about three sectors. Right? What are the three sectors? There's think about the kinds of organizations that can run schools. Okay? You have public sector, right? Regular public schools. You can also have what? Private yeah, private sector. Private sector they wanna make what? Money. Like, you know, mega hub one. Okay? They wanna make they wanna make mega bucks, right? Yes, we should buy that stuff. Yes. Have you heard of mega hub one? It's one of the biggest, is it the biggest or one of, it's the biggest hug one in, it's the biggest money maker, okay, hug one in Korea, right? <laughs> you spent so much money, <laughs> you should have bought the stuff and get his money. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, they also donated, they're so rich, they have a, they have their own name in Hanyang building. If you go to the administration building, they're one of the big donors. Like Samsung and then Mega Hug One. <laughs> it's like they're that rich. Oh, they have a company in China too? Oh, okay, interesting. So, internet audience from China, you probably heard about Mega Hug One. They're everywhere. Children, right? To educate the children, to make them, to prepare them to go to college, 
and to really like help them succeed in life. Okay? And so they were always think about, you know, what can I do to make sure this kid will succeed in college, right? And so we're we're gonna learn more about this in later in the semester when we do chapter five web testing. But one of the things that these charter schools found, especially there's this big charter school called KIP, Knowledge and Power Program, they found out that actually like you know, getting high scores on pin and test, it doesn't actually help you succeed in college. What is more important than high score on pin and test to finish college? You need things like what? Because getting high score means maybe you're really good at what? Yeah, days and also memorizing and not sleeping at night. Okay? But to succeed in college, to succeed in life, you might think you might need other characteristics like what? Your passion to turn the oil and in college. Yeah, maybe like passion. And also another important fact, factor which is grit. You know what? What does grit mean? Behind. What does grit? Grit means determination. Especially when things go bad. It's like, you know, like, you know, like those guys that wear those bandanas when they take the sitting test, I'm, I'm going to succeed. Okay? So imagine wearing that bandana but for a life. Grit. G R I T. G R I T. And, and teachers can actually measure students on their grit. They call it a character report card. Not just, not just your grade report card, but also character. So they can actually measure your character and discuss it with your parents. Say like, you know, maybe, you're too, maybe you have high passion, but low grit. That means you're, you, know, you have a lot of interest in something, but you quickly, you know what, you know, you, you became, you, become, you quickly become like, you know, you, you give up, okay, it's just too hard or something, and you know people like that, right, like it's too hard, it's too confusing, like, ah, I don't want to do it anymore, do you think, and so it's not just, you know, so it's not just passion, a lot of people are passion, but it's like a determination to like overcome many, many obstacles and still push ahead, it's a what? Oh, yeah, he did it. Right. So not being defeated. Okay? So just trying, you know, trying as best as you can. And if, if something doesn't work, try something else. But don't just give up in life. No chaser. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think too many Koreans, it's like, you know, they always have this high passion. I, w I want to be an actress. I want to be somebody in jack. Okay? <laughs> and then they have all these high goals and and if it doesn't work out, a lot of times you don't work out, right? When you go to Silicon Valley, more than 50% of the business is fail. Okay? But failure doesn't mean like life is over. If something doesn't work, you try something else. You move on. Okay? Those are the people that succeed in life. Grit, determination, flexibility. Okay? And you can measure that, and you can actually develop those skills. Do you understand? So think of ways that schools can develop your skills to be flexible, to be determined, okay? Like maybe like join the Boy Scouts or something, go camping, okay? Those are different ways to learn about cooperation and if that, you know, if, if this way doesn't make a fire, then try another way! And hurry up, it's cold! <laughs> so yeah, you need to learn to make fire. It's kind of like the show Jungle Object, Jungle Road. Yeah, Pupjik is a popular show. Yeah, they try all these crazy ways to build fire or to like catch a fish. And then first time you always fail, right? So you have to like try different things and then finally you know, it might work. Okay. Now, so the point is that a steering means a central government guide, but it doesn't do the actual work. Okay? Now, so the concept. The reason why I did Osborne and Gabler, this is actually an old book, it's a classic, 1992, okay? It's the foundation for new public management, which is, the, which is like the leading theory of government and society today. Um, but I chose this book because one, it's like a Bible of, you know, public, like public administration, and two, it's, lot, it's easier to read. I, because you know, the 
concepts are very simple, right? And then they just give you a lot of examples. Your task is to link those examples, link those concepts and examples to current events. Okay? And also, if for those who are high English, I can give you more readings, more advanced readings. But nobody, nobody asked me yet. Okay? <laughs> yeah. But if, but you can always ask me. Uh, so now link it to Korea, okay? Um, and then a, a fun example is that. Um, well, let me let me read this article. Let's read this article together. Have you heard of a? You know, like in Korea, the central government has the big money, and they give money to local governments, right? They do all these projects, and local, and you know, and the, but before they do the projects, local governments and companies they hire experts to see whether these projects are, you know, good idea or bad idea. Okay, but there is a problem, which is that. Uh, Oftentimes, these experts hired to examine the feasibility of social capital projects are political tools rather than conscientious advisors. Tools. What does that mean? That means instead of being independent experts, you know, studying to see whether this project, the benefits are really more than the cost, sometimes they're really controlled by who? What government? No, the local government. Right, local government and the company. Because from the central government point of view, let's say, let's say I only have Iraq. Well, you know, that's hundred thousand dollars, right? And there are so many projects, and I only have limited money. And so, because you know, you know, this is my money, I want to give this money to who? To the yeah, well, to the best project. You know, the highest benefit cost ratio, right? The highest productivity. Okay? But local governments and local businesses, do they wanna, you know, do they care about, you know, spending the money wisely? No, they just want the money. Okay? And so their incentive is to tell the central government that our project is the best. And so when they hire the local experts, like professors or somebody, they you know the so these experts get a lot of pressure to do what? To, to do to to get the money from central government for the also. Right. So they they get a lot of pressure to say that you know our project is the best. That the benefits are super high. Even okay. if they're not really sure. Right, even if they're not sure or even if like they think it's you know the benefits you know, it's not that high. Okay? Uh and it's because like one you know, it's like the local government, they hire the experts, and two, many of these experts come from the construction company. And so they get pressure from their own boss. Because if we if you don't give us high you know, high evaluation, that means we might not get the project. That means our company won't make any money. So this is a you know so this is a bad example of theory. Okay? You know, a good example of steering means that you split the steering from the rowing. People who do the work, right? People who do the work, they should not be assessing their own work. Do you understand? The, you know, people. You need to be outside expert, experts hired by the steering government to assess the work of the rowers. Okay. So you know, Korea is a bad example. So Osmond and Gabler wrote this in 1992, more than 20 years ago, and they're still not following even the most basic concepts in South Korea. Do you see? That's why you need to learn this book and change the government and society for once you become powerful. So for that, you need IMAC, not SOMAC. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so many MAC. I don't know. Maybe keep another class on corruption or <laughs> power. <laughs> okay, my class is just automating stuff. Okay, but you can take a class on, you know, yeah, <laughs> revolution, or political revolution. Okay, okay, or talk. I don't know. Yeah, I, I cannot.
I said communism, I might get arrested on TV. Okay? <laughs> but, but we're just talking about how to do good governance. Another famous example, we actually had this problem in the United States, which is that, like schools, right, teachers. Um, you know, teachers, they go, they're supposed to teach, but at the end of the year, who they, you know, who should test the student to see if they're actually learning? Right, the central body, right? But in the past, it was actually the teachers. So the teachers were responsible for testing their own students. And so this means that teachers have a lot of incentive to what? Let's say like they're bad teachers, all their students got wrong answers. So what do the teachers do when they get all the answers they change it. <laughs> Right, they change. Okay. I, I heard that kind of thing before. When I was in there. Oh, okay. It's right. The, the no more, no more child left. Right, because of no more child left. In the old days, it's like small government, right? Uh, government didn't do anything. Or in, or, or in other words, nobody did testing. So nobody knew if the students were learning anything. And even if they did test, they only tested the smart kids. They didn't test the uh, poor kids, black kids, or people who didn't speak English. And in LA, that's a lot, <laughs> you know? In Los Angeles, probably like 50% don't speak English. Do you see? And so, but because of no child left behind, government says you have to test everybody, okay? And so, teachers feel all this pressure. Like if my students are not learning, I might not get promoted. I might not get this big bonus. Okay, and so you know, so they decided to, so they started testing, but you know, they didn't read also in Gabler, so they let the rowers test their own students. They let the rowers test their own work, and the result was you know, predictable, tremendous cheating, and it was so obvious because they're all like getting the same answer or the same erase or the same eraser. You know, the same, so the same answers were getting erased, you know, and, you know, and, and, and they, when the, so the central body decided to check, and they sent it to Hongye people, statistics, and they said the only way this would be, this, this would be possible would be one out of a million chance, that all these students would erase the same answers, get the, erase the same answers and change it to, you know, to the correct answer, okay? And so today, in the better schools that we, you know, chapter one, um, they switch the teachers. So you cannot teach your own, you cannot test your own students. You understand? Either they get an outside proctor, or they switch the teachers. Maybe they make the, maybe they make the student answers worse <laughs> on the competition. Or at least you don't try to make it better. Okay? All right. So, and this was a, you know, this was a 2013, you know? Yeah, so this is very current, okay? What's happening now? It's, so it's all this big scandal. And so you have all these local governments spending, you know, billions of dollars on local projects, and they're not making any money, okay? So one, they need to make sure that, you know, rowers cannot test themselves. And number two is that uh, maybe change the entire system. Uh, in the United States, central government doesn't give most of the money. It's a local government that raises their own money. So they're in charge. They become steering. And in the United States, they can raise their own money, but they can also go bankrupt. Do you understand? In Korea, local governments cannot go bankrupt. And because of that, they just spend money whatever, because they know the central government will always bail them out. Okay, but in America, local governments like Detroit, they can go bankrupt, and they know that. And so they want to, you know, in Korea, Japan, if you go bankrupt, good or bad? Quite bad. It's really bad, right? In the old days, tata, okay, before you go bankrupt. Anyway, so if you go bankrupt, it really looks really bad for your city. So cities work hard to spend their money wisely. And so because it's their money, they focus on stealing. They focus on spending that money wisely. Okay? But if it's 
not your money, the central government's money. If all you're doing is growing, then you don't, you, know, you don't spend it as wisely. That means they cannot control their budget anymore. And the judge, the judge hires like an outside person to oversee the budget until they pay the creditors off. Yeah, right. So they have to ne- well, they have to negotiate with the creditors, the, the people who lent you money. You cannot get it all back. But you have to pay some back. That's number one. So you get an outside person. So Detroit, the governor hired like an outside lawyer to oversee the entire city. So the mayor, city council, they don't have any money to spend. Okay. And number two, no one's gonna no one's gonna lend them money for a long time. You see? Like I lent you money, you you know you, you don't pay me back or you only pay me fifty percent. Okay? And so it becomes much more difficult to borrow money. And you can only borrow money at very high interest rate either or with very high collateral. Saying like if I don't pay you back, I'm gonna give you my land, my dung, my soul. Maybe not soul, but you know, something. Okay? So and bec- so because the USA has bankruptcy laws, local governments are very careful. And so far, only like maybe only two or three have declared bankruptcy. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the main reason for bankruptcy outside of Detroit is because the employees they they are too powerful, the rowers. So the city government promised too much money and pension. And because of too much pension obligation, the cities are going bankrupt. So the smart governments, instead of hiring permanent employees, they just contract. That way they won't have, you know, they won't that way they won't go bankrupt. Okay? Okay. Blah blah blah. So that's basically it for you know Osborne and Gabler. And then we got two student papers. Yes. Better this time only two hours late. <laughs> I mean two hours. Yes, not thirty minutes <laughs> before. That was good. Two hours before, not thirty minutes before. Okay. So I got one paper from Mr. Cha and then one paper from Mr. Cho. Yes. Where did that lady go? Maybe she's like, ah, I'm the only girl. <laughs> <laughs> so she felt too marginalized. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's too bad. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Mr. Joe, raise your hand. Okay. So you're basically talking about, you know, catalytic government and your question is how about Korea? Can you work in Korea, right? And you said what? Can catalytic government work in Korea? You said yes or no. No, right? And then did anyone read this? I emailed it to you, right? Try to read try to read it before class. Because I just wanna go over it because I don't wanna just read the whole thing with you. It's a waste of time. Uh, but his main point is that I don't think steering and rowing works really well. I don't think it's a good idea in Korea. And the example is uh, the Korean government, the central government, tried to privatize Incheon Airport. They tried to privatize Incheon Airport uh, railroad, Cheoncha or Kicha? Kicha? Okay, train. And they tried to also, uh, you know, do like tele, like telemedicine. Okay. Now let's go over those examples one by one because you're saying that it caused a lot of unemployment and make Korean society like protest, demonstrate, okay? So my comments were, well, one, always save your document as PS, name, topic, okay? So everybody knows what this is about, okay? So PS is our class, political sociology, your name, and then brief topic. So just say, you know, catalytic Korea, okay? Oh, that's what I wrote, (laughs) okay? So your claim is that Lee Myung Bak and Park administration are bad examples of catalytic government, that their privatization policies lead to employee layoff and protest. Everybody see this, right? Yeah. And then your example and evidence are the railroad, intern, and medical treatment. Now, for a better essay, I want you to just 
discuss some counter arguments and examples. What is the evidence of actual? So give me give me evidence that there were actually layoffs. Who got fired? Did anyone get fired from Intel or from the Kicha?
it because it's cheaper or because it's more choice? Because of the choice or because of the cost? Both. Okay, so you want more choice. At lower prices. Lower prices. Okay. Okay. Well, if the local doctor is unhappy, maybe it could be a bigger chusa. Okay? It's like, you know, you don't need this chusa, but I don't like you. <laughs> On your butt. Okay? Um, actually, an even bigger issue than telemedicine is teleeducation. Okay? And this is a this is becoming a big issue in the United States and it's also the reason why we're having this OTW class. Because you heard of you heard of open class. You heard of open you know, open courses, right? Open source. And what are you know, what's an example? These are basically free classes on the internet with professors like who? With professors like like Michael Sandel. You know, he's the most famous professor in political science, right? And he teaches a course named Justice every year. And this is and this is one of the most popular classes in Harvard. And it's also and now it's free all over the world, right? And so many, you know, and so many universities are deciding like if I have a choice between a professor who's kind of mediocre and for and having a class taught by Michael Sandel, that many students were choose who? Yeah, Michael Sandel. They want the superstar, right? <laughs> you know, they, well, they also want to learn from the best, right? If you have a, you know, if you had a computer science <coughs> class with Bill Gates and somebody here at Hanya, okay, uh, you want to learn from Bill Gates, right? Well, of course. But <laughs> if you get a class taught by Bill Gates, for Michael Sandel, that means that many professors, they won't get any students. So, you know, they won't have a job, <laughs> right? And so, instead of hiring a professor to teach like justice or computer science, you can just hire a graduate student to, you know, to show the lecture from Michael Sandel or Bill Gates and then just have a discussion after the lecture. And this is what they're this is what universities have started. Universities like San Jose State. Okay? Because and so some prof and so some of the professors are protesting. Just like the Korean doctor. They're saying that this is gonna what? Why is this bad? How you know, why is why is open why is internet education bad? Yeah, they're gonna lose their jobs, or even, or maybe or maybe their tenure. They they're gonna get less students. Okay, and so you know, and so they're saying it's bad for us. But so that's the cost, right? But the but the benefit is what you said. Students have more choice, and they can get cheaper classes. They can learn from Bill Gates or Michael Sandel, even if they go to Chamundeakyo. So actually, internet education is perfect for Chamundeakyo because those are really cheap classes, and you know the teachers they don't have a lot, you know, and the teachers are cheap. They're not, you know, they're not so famous, but they can easily, you know, they can easily like you know oversee a class taught by Michael Sandel and just lead a discussion. Do you understand? And so that has a potential to to reduce educational costs, maybe by half. Do you think? So imagine like in the future that instead of paying like how much money are you paying to go to Hanya? Yeah. Tell me what you wanna. So for you is that little money or big money? Okay, for you it's big money, right? In America we pay ten times ship back. Right. Yeah. It's like you pay. tuition is like forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. Private school. Public school, cheap one, Berkeley, UCLA, you pay uh, ten mana. No, no, no. Yeah, ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Uh no, per year. So you, you pay five thousand dollars a semester. But that's for 
public school. Oh, do you understand? So, yeah, so, so if I go to Berkeley, I pay 10000 If I go to Stanford, which is next to me, I pay 40000 Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. Crazy, huh? Right. But I hear they, that's how much people pay when they go to that private school, you know, like Jeju English, Jeju uh, PTS here. Yeah, anyway, so it's the same cost. Uh, so, so right, education across is getting higher and higher because professors like Michael Sandel are very expensive. So the point is that you can either pay $40,000 to go to Stanford or Harvard or pay $400 to go to Chamdun Deakyo and get all their classes on the internet. Do you understand? So maybe if you're rich, maybe it's a good idea to go to Harvard. But if you're not rich, do I want to spend, you know, four thousand dollars and go to Hanyang, or just spend four hundred dollars and just go to Chamdun Deakyo and learn from these professors? And if you go to even if you go to Chamdun Deakyo, your transfer or say that you learn from Michael Sandel. Do you think? Yeah. So you know you maybe you might want that choice. Maybe you're actually select that choice instead of going to Hanyang. You just go to Chamdun Deakyo with courses from Bill Gates and Michael Sandel. Do you think? So that means that you know a lot of schools. If you're not the best, you're gonna go bankrupt. So either you have to be the best or you have to be the cheapest. Anything in between, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be, you're gonna be weeded out. So that's the potential future for education. So schools are competing really hard. They're creating internet classes like this because they want to be one of the best. Because you either have to be the best or you have to be the cheapest. If, not, if you're in the middle, like you suck and you're expensive, <laughs> you're gonna go bankrupt. Okay? And so this process is already happening in America and it's slowly happening in Korea. Okay? So the government has actually declared that, right? That you know, schools that suck, you're gonna close down. Right? Oh, yeah? Explain. Okay. Okay. Internet study. Is it good for you as a student? 
Did you take online class or did you take public class? actually Google it. It's called a Khan Education. Okay? And it's free. Khan Academy. Oh, they have it in Korea. Interesting. Oh, you, oh they, they just translated it into Korean. Okay? These are basically YouTube videos. He's, uh, I think he's like from India, South Asia. And then at first, uh, he made you know, he was tutoring his daughter and then he put some of the videos online and then all his friends and family said, this is so good, you're such a good teacher, why don't you post it on, you know, online on YouTube? So he did and then he got so much response that he decided to make this a global institute. So all his videos, instruction on any subject, so he, so he got other teachers to do it too. So now you can do it for many different subjects in many different languages. And most of them are free. And number two, have you heard of SAT? SAT? Right. You know, you know SAT, right? American Senate? The the American SAT asked Khan to be a partner. To teach the SAT for free. Because in Korea what? Yeah, like ABS, exactly, right. So, you know, because, you know, people spend so much money for SAT, so the SAT, so the SAT asked Khan, can you offer free online classes? We will give you all our material. How we, how we make up the questions in the first place. That way, we, everybody can have equal opportunity. So that's an example of a third sector, whether that's Khan Academy or EBS is government, right? So that's public sector. But if, imagine if EBS was a non-profit, then it'd be like third sector, okay? So the point is that online classes are not all evil or all pretty, okay? They can be ugly but helpful, okay? I don't know how good looking Khan is. I know he didn't do 
classic creature. <laughs> so he has a natural, you know, so he's good and natural looking. Okay? So check that out. Okay? You, if you check it out, you can use this as one of your examples. Okay? As third sector or steering and rowing or, you know, entrepreneurial governance. Okay? And say, like, you know, we can do this in Korea. Have online classes. Let students choose. Okay? Uh, one, one reason why we have things like the Khan Academy is because more than almost 3% of American students, they just homeschool. They learn at home. You heard of homeschool, right? And if you, like, you know, you cost the government about maybe, like, you know, like, places like New York, $10,000 a year, cannot to educate one public school student. Okay? But how much does it cost to educate a homeschool student? On average, it costs $500 each month. And most of the time, the government doesn't pay. Some governments, like in Arizona, they give tax credits. So if you homeschool your child, you can, you know, cut your taxes. Okay? But, but, the, but the bottom line is that homeschooling is a lot cheaper. Okay? It's like some students. It's not for everybody, but you know, let's say you're like, you know, let's say like you're a super junior, and if you go to reg, can you go to regular school? No. Yeah, like all these girls were, you know, try to touch you. You cannot study. Okay. So many celebrities, and also like, there are a lot of kids who don't like the pressure of school. So. I think, especially in Korea, you know, I think a lot of kids in high school, they feel so much pressure, right? And they don't really enjoy their education. In America, if you feel the same pressure, you have a choice. You just, okay, let's just skip school. You can just get all the school materials and just learn it at home. And instead of going to class, you can just go to Khan Academy. You know, get it from all the YouTube videos. Okay? And Statistically, you know, the kids who do homeschool, they actually score higher than the public school kids. And they go to top universities like Harvard. So, we're not saying that homeschooling is always better, but it's just that students have a choice. Okay? And right now in Korea, there's very little choice. People say just public school. Right? But in Korea, you have the nice to get more choice. And if you like that model, you can push Korea. Why does everybody have to go to public school? Let's give parents the option of just homeschool. So instead of going to public school, you can just send your kids to Hagwon or yeah, just or just teach them how to teach their own kids. Okay? And so they can learn what they want. Okay, develop their own passions and interests and and just take a simple test. And if you pass that test, you get a high school degree. So in America, it's called a GED, General Education Diploma. And then you take another test, SAT. And then if you take, and if you score high, then you go to college. So you can make it very simple. Do you think? Do you think a lot of parents would be interested in that in Korea? If you gave them the option?
somebody to do the conjunction and then go to Seoul or better yet go to Stanford and then you can be nationwide publicity okay the same thing happened at the uh, United States because all these people who were homeschool kids they kept winning the national eight the national seven games because you know they just stay home all day <laughs> they just memorize the entire dictionary so I think like four or five years in a row we had all these Indian kids who were educated at home because the public schools were too boring for them. And so they just memorized the entire dictionary. They won the seven years. And then they went to like, you know, top schools like Harvard and Stanford. Okay? And then there was another kid who was homeschooled, but he was a great athlete. And then Tim Tebow, he went to University of Florida and he won the Heisman. So the best football player in the nation. Right, Tim Tebow, you heard of him, right? Yeah, yeah he's a famous person. Right, right, right. Bible yeah, Bible chapters on his uh, faith. So after he did that, the NCAA passed the rules and you can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I remember that. Tebow, right, Tebow. Yeah, it's like this. After, after, every time he scored a touchdown, he would do this, thanking God. So, every, so he's very famous. But the point is that in America, you have more choice. Well, Florida, you have more choice. So even if you're homeschooled, you can still play football in your local high school. So you take academic classes at home, and then and then you go to the public schools to play football, as long as you live in the neighborhood. What do you think? So yeah, so you have choice. Right. So you know, think about that, and think about if that kind of system would be better for students. Okay. Okay. The other paper we got was from Mr. Cha, who was talking about education. Yay! And then you're talking about again. You're talking about education. Okay. So you're talking about public education, and you're saying that Korea is slowly transitioning. In the old days. Public school teachers would teach everything, including extracurricular. And he was saying that the public school teachers were so busy that they could not pay attention to students. So many students were just playing smartphones, like Kim. <laughs> Did you do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. Were well, you? Uh -huh. When the he was saying that you know public school teachers were so busy. The students didn't pay attention, they were just playing with smart smart. Oh. Was that you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyways, but these days, there's a transition. So many public schools have what? They have a uh, hangout. Right. Did I spell it right? Hangout. No, no, no. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> As you can see, I never got an A in Korean. Wow. Okay? Anyway, so you can go ahead. Okay, yeah, retype it for me. So, Tangao means what? For those who are foreigners, what does Tangao mean? Can you explain? Can the Korean students explain? No! The, not, the, not, not my spelling, but the real Tangao. What does. Yeah, after school classes. Right, after school, extra, after school classes. And these are taught by who? Regular teachers? Teachers from outside. Right, outside, outside teachers. They're contractors. Do you think? Uh, why? Well, they should focus on teaching their core subjects. Yes, yes. Yeah, sports, music, English, right? So, so, so with Tango, you can actually offer many different kinds of courses. And two, these are annual contracts. So if the teacher's not good, yeah, just kick them out. The, the way the system is designed is that students choose and you get paid per number of students. Mm -hmm. That means you have a strong incentive to what? Teach well. Yeah, teach well or well to increase the number of students, right? So if you're a good teacher, you'll get a lot of students. If you're a bad teacher, 
surgeon. You might have to get plastic surgery. <laughs> 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 right. Yes. Very beautiful. Or one teacher I read in the newspaper, she just ordered a lot of pizza. Okay. So I remember when I was a when I was a teacher at first, I brought a lot of chocolate because you know I was a bad teacher. Okay. <laughs> but now I'm a better teacher. So I only bring chocolate because I love you, not because I need more students. <laughs> Thank you. 
contract for one year. Just like me and the well, the Hingen team and me. So we all have like one or two year contract. And then I don't know until like one month before if I if my contract will be renewed. <laughs> so it's very hard to plan. Yeah. Right. But if you're a good teacher, you feel confident that you know, your contract will be renewed. Unless they're corrupt and they did their job to their, I don't know, to their, to the, maybe the, some chaja. <laughs> <laughs> their chaja. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, so there's, you know, there's pros and cons, but I think overall, the system is, you know, the Pangal system or contract system is usually better for students because it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper, it's a lot more flexible. Okay. All right, moving on. Any questions? Okay, so uh, that's basically it. Okay, now I want to, oh, let me turn this off.